Joining us now is Judy Shelton, a former uh, Federal Reserve Board nominee. She's currently a senior fellow uh, at the Independent uh, Institute. And uh, it's good to see you, Judy. It's been a while. Do uh, you think, the, uh, given the, the economic backdrop, is, is a more hawkish stance uh, justified, in your view? I don't think it's justified. I think that the Fed's model is not working. It's certainly not working the way Fed policymakers thought that it would. Uh, last August, uh, when Chair Powell said that the Fed was going to aggressively use its tools to try to equilibrate demand and supply, that it would bring pain to households and businesses. And the way his model was supposed to work was that to reduce aggregate demand, the Fed would raise interest rates, and that would cause reduced economic growth, and that would cause more unemployment, or as, as he likes to say, softer labor conditions. But I think what's happening now is we see people going back to work productively. Growth has been decent, record low unemployment. Demand is sustained. And, and instead of questioning the assumptions of the model, which goes to the very constructs the Fed has about the relationship between economic growth, inflation, and unemployment, they're doubling down. And so their formula is really collapsing into an axiom of, of the higher the interest rate, the lower the inflation. And that could be exactly wrong, because I think they're affecting supply more than demand. So it could prove damaging rather than helpful to resolving inflation. I think even um, members of the Fed, Jay Powell himself, would say, look, we, we, there's only so many things that we can do. We don't really have a magic bullet or a targeted uh, approach uh, to try to bring inflation under control. Uh, so if, it only, if only half of what you, if you're only 50 percent effective, but that's all you got, I think that's, that's what they would argue, that this is the tool they have. Uh, so, so that's what they're going to do. They, they can't control supply. That's, that's up to the Biden administration and, and Congress, isn't it? I mean, what, what, but, can, the Fed, what can the Fed do about, about supply? But the downside of continuing to hike rates is that you're adding to, to the cost of doing business, the cost of capital for small businesses and corporations is uh, extremely important. So if you're causing unemployment, you, you would have people who are now producing goods and providing services out of work, but still receiving, rather, whether it's a severance yeah. payments from the private sector or government unemployment benefits, money that feeds demand, but they're no longer contributing to supply. And if you're causing businesses to have to uh, increase the, the cost of capital, um, that's going to go to the bottom line because they, they have to pay employees more. They know that. They're prepared to do that. But that's going to exacerbate inflation also. Meanwhile, if, if the Fed went to um, astronomical rates to 10 percent, but the fiscal transfers because of excess spending by Congress continues to feed inflation and aggregate demand, then there's nothing the Fed can be doing that's helpful. They're actually hurting. So um, I think that the Fed needs to acknowledge the role of Congress in this. And um, I know that, that Chair Powell has kind of shrunk from doing that, unlike former Fed chairs. Um, certainly Volcker was willing to say that balancing the budget was imperative to getting inflation under control. I don't hear that coming from the Fed. And so I guess we have this situation where, to show respect for the Fed's independence, Congress doesn't criticize the Fed. It was pretty mild yesterday. I expect it will be again today. And in return, um, Chair Powell does not criticize Congress for overspending or weigh in on fiscal matters.